If Manny overlooks me, he's gonna lose his belt. I will outstrike him. I will outgrit him. I will outperform him. Congratulations, Blackburn, on making it this far. Unfortunately, this is where your train stops tonight, and uh, this is where I cement myself as the best. Crazy one, you should definitely be worried standing across the table from the dog called Pitbull. You need to worry because you're gonna pass this belt on to me. Danny, you ain't got a shot. This is my belt. I don't think you're ready. I'm gonna show you that you're not ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is on! International Fight Week in full effect, and what better way to get the weekend kicked off than Power Slap Bait coming to you for the first time from the beautiful Fountain Blue Las Vegas, one of the new crown jewels of the fight capital of the world. Power Slap Bait, the crazy Hawaiian versus Van Heerden, presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast, eight fights on the card, including a pair of title fights in the main and the co-main. Welcome inside the Fountain Blue Las Vegas, our home away from home. The stars starting to trickle in. It's an absolutely stacked card. And as always, it is my pleasure to be joined by the UFC Hall of Famer, Michael Bisping. And brother, we have come a long way since Power Slap 1. Oh, we certainly have. And let's remember, it's International Fight Week. So it's a massive week here in Las Vegas. And I'm very proud to be standing here calling these matches because it's going to be another tremendous night of action. I mean, we've got the super heavyweight title top to bottom. We're going to see his head slapped off all over the place. We've got former UFC stars like Paige Van Zandt now coming over to Power Slap. It's guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be another good night. Bigger and better as we take a look at the main card. What's going down here at the Fountain Blue Las Vegas? A massive light heavyweight matchup kicking things off when Turk Daddy Slim meets Vernon Cathy. The first of two super heavyweight matchups on the main card is Camille Marusarge and the Russian sensation Dumpling. As you mentioned, Bisping, former UFC star Paige Van Zandt making her power slap debut against Christine Wilmerans. Our co-main event, it's Emmanuel No Love Muniz defending his welterweight title against Anthony Babyface Blackburn. And in the main event, the big boys, the super heavies, a title fight, the champ, the crazy Hawaiian, and Danny Van Heerden. The crazy Hawaiian, all he's done is win a perfect 3-0 and in power slap, 15-1 and in slap fighting in his career, and he's going to have his hands full against the South African, Danny Van Heerden. Yeah, no joke there, Dan, because Danny Van Heerden, this man has done every single form of combat sports, whether it's boxing, K-1, mixed martial arts, got a really good record in MMA as well, but now he's come over to power slap, and he's got his eyes firmly on becoming the super heavyweight champion, but that isn't going to be easy. The crazy Hawaiian is absolutely gigantic won the heavyweight super heavyweight title last time out coming into this one very very focused extremely confident and as always when you're the size of that man you're gonna pack one hell of a slap 385 pounds and he said for the first time in power slap his right hand is healthy he switched up hands in the past 
plans on using the right hand the entire time as we take a look at the top five super heavyweights, the striker rankings presented by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Head to kudosnacks.com now and enter the promo code SLAP for 25% off your order. It's the champ taking on the fourth-ranked contender, Danny Van Heerden from South Africa in our main event. As for the co-main event, Emmanuel No Love Muniz defending his welterweight strap for the very first time against the Motown kid, Anthony Babyface Blackburn, who has yet to lose on a power slap stage. 3-0 and 1 in power slap is Anthony Blackburn. He comes from Michigan. He said he's got that Michigan grit. He's coming into this one extremely confident because he's realized this is more about technique over power. And he says, I have the cleanest strikes. He's never committed a foul. But that doesn't matter. If you get knocked out, who cares about the technique? And that is why Emmanuel Muniz is capable of doing. The man has ridiculous power. Last time out, knocked out KO Chris to become the champion. There it is right there. Massive style, massive power, and a massive match. Power Slap hasn't even been around for two years. And in case you're wondering how it got started, it was Dana White, just like the rest of us, seeing this slap fighting on the other side of the world, said, you know, I might be able to make something of this. The guy that really caught his attention was only 5'9". He was 350 pounds. He was a pig farmer from Siberia. His name? Dumpling. Vegas. <laughs> Я Василий Камоцкий, фермер из Сибири, в России. Камоцкий popped up on my radar in around 2018 when slapping started popping up on social media. Первый раз, когда я видел турнир по пощечинам, я просто вышел в толпы, меня друзья вытолкнули на иди поучаствуй, я пошел, вырубил двоих человек, как бы и все пошло. He definitely caught not only the world's attention, but mine. This guy is the OG of slap fighting. Так получилось, что мы как бы дальше пошли, ну всякие звать, ну всякие шоу начали делать, меня туда звали. У меня получалось, стал, стал становиться более известным. He was this big, powerful guy that was knocking people out, and he could take a slap. Z przybyszem z Rosji, a daje u tak nie ruszyło go to zało. No nie ruszyło, chyba trafił troszeczkę. His videos were doing millions of views online. I started to think I could build a real business out of slap fight. Когда были первые пощечины, на которых я участвовал в Красноярске, на турнире с Амелем по шоу ведущий меня спросил. Что ты, что ты делаешь? Чем ты занимаешься? Я ему сказал, люблю есть пельмени. Он сказал, говорит, можно мы тебя напишем пельмени? Ну, я, я говорю, пиши. Ну, записали так и прилипло, и все. И нормально, сейчас меня все знают как пельмени. Я даже из-за этого был там лицом компании по производству пельменей там у нас. Ну, делал рекламу пельменей. Dumpling lives on a farm outside of Lansky, Russia. He raises pigs. He has 40 of them. He traveled 5,000 miles to get to Las Vegas. He went from his farm in Russia to the Russian airport to Qatar to San Francisco and then landed in Las Vegas. Я приехал, чтобы завоевать пояс. Ну, в будущем хочется завоевать пояс, а там уже как получится. И я же, получается, первый с России, то тоже гордо, что первый человек с России будет участвовать. Что это будет как бы, ну, хорошая история. Vasily Dumpling Kamatsky is a true legend in the sport of slap fighting. После сегодняшнего боя хочу, чтобы ну, фанаты знали, что вот приехал русский чемпион. Мое послание всем супертяжам. Я приехал, бойтесь. So, Dumpling is quite the character. He's been walking around smiling and laughing with everybody. Made a long trip over here and he said, what do I do to train? We asked him, like, every boy, that's all these guys. What do you do to train? He goes, I just work on the farm. He got work with the pigs in the morning. I work in the field in the afternoon. He doesn't do a whole lot of slap training. Yeah, but that's good old-fashioned hard work, Daniel. The man's out there working the land, feeding the pigs, picking things up, just working. Good old-fashioned hard work, and that's all that he needs to do. Listen, the man is a natural. That's why when Dana White saw this, he's like, I've got to get this guy involved. I've got to start this promotion. He's kind of like a pioneer, an OG, and he's coming here for business. It was a long old trip to get here. He didn't come to lose. They call him the dumpling. We on the feature there he's eating 22 rather large dumplings in one sitting 100 grams of meat in each one so the man can definitely you know he can fill his face with dumplings but can he take the slaps that's the real question he also has a dumpling sponsorship 
as yeah, well. Yeah, he does. You know, one of the biggest personalities in our sport is Austin Turpin. They call him Turp Daddy Slim. Unfortunately for Austin, he hasn't been so slim in quite yeah. some time. He had a title fight his last time out that was ruled a non-title fight because he missed weight by about 10 pounds. So you'd think he'd come in extra motivated. He's fighting Vernon Cathy, who's one of the OGs in the sport, one of the older guys. Vernon Cathy dropped 25 pounds to make weight. Austin Turpin missed again by 10 pounds. So much talent, but you have to wonder about the motivation at this point. Austin Turpin is one of my favorite guys. When he walks out here tonight, he'll light this place on fire. He's a showman uh, at his heart, heart, at his core, right? He's got knockout power. He can take a good shot. We all love the celebration, but none of that matters if you can't make weight. You're disrespecting yourself, the sport, your opponent, Dana White, us, all the work that we put into growing this. If you're going to show up and you can't make weight, get a grip. But he is very, very regretful. Regretful. And he might be even more regretful because his opponent, Vern Cathy, as we know, he can knock people out with one shot. He's done it multiple times. So if he can go out there and get a big win tonight, OK, maybe he can undo the damage that he's done. But it's not an easy match. Felt bad about it. He had to give him a little pep talk during our fighter meeting. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, his attitude is as he comes out here on stage tonight. You know what they say, styles make fights. Yes. And stars make promotions. And the biggest star in power slap yet is stepping to the stage tonight. Former UFC star Paige Van Zandt making her debut against Christine Wolmerans. I know there's a lot of anticipation tonight to see what Paige can do here at the power slap table. She's a slight underdog in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Paige Van Zandt, as we know, she's been on uh, the, the UFC for a very, very long time. Had a decent career, fought some really, really good competition. Left the UFC, went on Dancing with the Stars. She's done all kinds of combat sports, and she wants to try this out. She says that I'm a gangster. That's her saying that, not me. She's a great fighter. She's had a lot of success. She's had some ups and some downs. I'm really excited to see her here tonight and see what she can do. She's had a lot of success outside of the octagon. She's done some bare knuckle boxing. She's done some boxing. She's obviously a huge hit on OnlyFans as well. And a lot of people have said, hey, you don't need to do this for the money. Why do you want to do it? She said, because everybody always says I'm a tough girl. This is the ultimate measure of toughness to come out, come out here and stand at that table and go slap for slap. Yeah, that's right. Listen, these people are adrenaline junkies. One of them said to me, he said, you have no idea what it feels like to stand there and let somebody slap you in the face as hard as you can. And then you get to return the favor. That's what Paige Van Zandt's going to do tonight. She's going to feel that thrill, feel that rush. And who knows, we might see her here to stay and maybe become a champion one day. You know, there's a lot of interesting competitors that we've had over the years. So not only do you have Paige Van Zandt, but you have a guy like Dumpling. Yes. To fly 5,000 miles, literally across the world, to take part in this promotion, and he could not be happier to be here. What does it say about the growth of the sport? Not only are we here in this marvelous ballroom at the Fountain Blue Las Vegas, listen, we were in the apex at the beginning. It was a slow build, but man, this thing has taken off like a rocket ship. All you have to do is look at social media. What does it say about the sport to have guys like Dumpling, to have gals like Paige Van Zandt participating in Power Slap. Well, they know what they're onto. They know this is a massive platform. There's money to be made, and it's fun as well. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't been to a Power Slap event, it is one of the best nights in that you're ever going to have. This place is starting to fill up now. The people are coming in. The atmosphere is building. We haven't even had the first match yet, and you can already feel the energy inside the room. It's going to be another good one, Dan. All right, let's take a, a look at what else is going to be going on here tonight. Super heavyweights kicking off the prelims. It's the number one contender Dane Viernes facing Dwayne Crespo a win by Viernes could set up a match with his brother who's the champ man that would be fun he said they're gonna have to pay us a lot of money to do that we'll see if that comes to fruition Jackie Cataline you remember her that illegal viral knockout of Sheena Bathory her last time out that was everywhere she faces newcomer Katharina Leaner, who oh by the way is friends with Sheena Bathory so there's a little bad blood here right from the jump and Wesley Drain stands across the table from Isaiah pretty boy Kinones to get things kicked off back to the main card Paige Van Zant becomes the first former UFC star to make her presence felt on the power slap stage Charlie Arnold is joining us now with more on this big matchup with Christine Wilmerantz Dan, thank you so much. Yeah, we are all super pumped to see Paige Van Zandt enter Power Slap. Everybody is excited. A very warm welcome to Van Zandt. And honestly, everybody at this point is talking about her and for obvious reasons. Now, Van Zandt, she has 3 million followers on Instagram, and she calls herself a combat sports collector. 
She spent time in the UFC, bare knuckle boxing. She was a pro wrestler in AEW. So when she got the opportunity to join Power Slap, she literally jumped on it. She was like, why not? I'm already in tremendous shape. Just last month, she had a boxing match. Also, Austin Turpin has been helping to train and to guide her. On top of that, also her husband has been getting involved. She says what he's been doing is he's been whacking her literally as hard as he can in their backyard with pool noodles. So I guess that's a little bit of extra prep, if you will. But Van Zandt says she knows exactly what she brings to the table. In her words, I am a gangster. I am ready to take over and have some fun. Now, standing across from her is going to be South African MMA fighter Christine Wolmorans, who is coming on to her second appearance here in Power Slap. She says she is totally ready to absorb all of that extra attention that comes along with facing someone like Van Zandt. But she is quick to say, when you step onto that stage, it does not matter how many followers you have. It doesn't matter what you have accomplished. And also, Christine, very confident about what she is bringing to this product. She's been training very hard. Her training includes MMA, BJJ, also a lot of neck strengthening exercises so she can be extremely stout on defense. All I've got to say, I am super pumped to see these two ladies take center stage for a fight that has quite literally already gone viral before even taking place. Dan, back to you. Pump for that one as well. Thank you very much, Charlie. The rules of Power Slap are brought to you by Rumble Bold and Free. Download the Rumble app or visit rumble.com. For the striker, they must use a flat, open hand to the cheek or a clubbing foul will be assessed. The feet have to be grounded. No pivoting or stepping. You must declare a hand and a number prior to the strike. For the defender, no chin tucking or flinching. Flinching is massive. It's possibly a point deduction. And the striker, well, they go again. The defender does receive 60 seconds to recover after each strike. Two fouls get you DQ'd in a three-round match, three fouls in a five-round match, and you're out. The defender does get two minutes to recover after they've been fouled. Power Slap is using instant replay, and if there isn't a finish, we go to the judges' scorecards. All right, here's a look at the stats. Through 164 Power Slap matches, the winners of the coin toss have gone on to win 49.5% of the time. It's basically 50-50. The coin toss doesn't determine the winner, but it can impact the odds. It's up to you where you see the value if you're laying down some cash. The big boys kicking things off to Hawaiian hitman Dane Viernes could be one win away from a title shot and it would be against his brother. But first, he has to get by this man. Dwayne Crespo has been through the wars, slapping against some of the best of the game. And tonight, he faces literally his largest opponent yet. And for the first time tonight, we put the power slap table to work. Eight fights on the card at the beautiful Fountain Blue Las Vegas and the super heavyweights getting us started. These odds are presented by Circus Sports, sports betting the way it should be. Keeping up a busy schedule, Dane Viernes makes his second power slap appearance this year. He's eager to welcome Dwayne Crespo to the super heavyweight division in an intriguing clash of big fellas. Hoping to set the tone for a victorious night for Power Slap's first family, Dane to Hawaiian hitman Viernes takes to the stage before his brother, the crazy Hawaiian. And he'll attempt to show the form that garnered him his first Vegas win over Slap for Cash when he squares off with Dwayne Crespo. Making his eighth Power Slap appearance, Dwayne Crespo established his reputation in the heavyweight division. But tonight, following a big win over Logan Greenhall in February, he moves up with the intention of shaking things up among the big boys at Super Heavyweight. Coming up next, Dane, the Hawaiian hitman, faces Dwayne, the Iron Giant Crespo. These fighter walkouts brought to you by 10X Health, Precision Nutrition Wellness. Go to 10xnutrition.com. This is the Iron Giant, Dwayne Crespo. The smallest guy in the super heavyweight division moved up because he thought this would be his quickest route to a title. And he says, not cutting weight. Well, that certainly helps him out quite a bit, Mike. Yeah, he also feels like they're not generally as athletic in the super heavyweight division. Of course, they are bigger, they are heavier, and they probably do hit harder, but he's very, very confident also. As you mentioned, 
it gets into a tile fight quicker. It can put together a nice little uh, a, a little streak. He feels like he'll get a tile shot quicker because he's been around for a while at heavyweight. This is, I believe, his ninth fight. He's now training with Damien DeBell as well, who we saw a second ago, because, well, he's not a competitor anymore. He lost to him in the past. He lost by a knockout, but now he's training with him. They're exchanging tips, and he really feels that that has really helped him to up his game, and he's coming into this one as a super heavyweight, reborn. Some guys treat this as a hobby. Dwayne Crespo treats this as a profession. He trains full-time, one of the real junkies of the sport, always chatting about technique and form with other guys on the roster, and he has no fouls in seven fights. Nobody else can say that. The Hawaiian hitman, Dean Vierna, is coming into this one a minus 240 favorite. If he wins, could be a potential showdown with his brother, the crazy Hawaiian, who's the champion. Yep. His brother is here watching him walk out right now. Says his biggest issue is focusing on no fouls, Charlie. Yeah, no fouls, and he's been very focused in the, what we'll call it, the off season since his last time out. You might not be able to tell, guys, but Dane Viernes, he has dropped 10 pounds. Can you tell? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I figured as much. Uh, he's crediting it, it to his time. He's been spending in the gym alongside his brother and uncle. They've all been going together, holding each other accountable, which has been fantastic. Though he is down a few. He's 377 pounds still. His opponent, Dwayne Crespo, weighed in at 278. That is a 100-pound difference. And Dwayne Hitman says he gives props to Crespo, who typically fights below the 265-pound heavyweight limit for moving on up. But he says he is not the right guy to experiment on. He says this fight will end with a, quote, one-slap medevac that oh. will send Crespo right oh. back to that weight class that he came from, guys. Well, the biggest win for Dan Vierna as well as, of course, when he made his debut against Slav for Cash. Round two, knocked him out. It was a vicious knockout. Slav for Cash headbutted the stand, fell over, didn't get up for quite some time. And remember, Slav for Cash came in for, to this one, like, very cocky, like he was going to take over the sport. Well, Dane Vernes put that one to bed, put him to bed, and looking to put his opponent to bed tonight. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our first fight of the night. It's Dwayne Crespo Jr. and the Hawaiian Hitman. Hawaiian Hitman, one year older, a pretty massive six-inch reach advantage, and the hand size also much bigger for the bigger Hawaiian Hitman. Let's send it now to Justin Bernard, our power slap announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is on! Welcome to the Power Slap Arena, live from the Fontainebleau, Las Vegas. This is Power Slap 8, the crazy Hawaiian versus Van Heerden. This match is three rounds in the Power Slap Super Heavyweight Division and presented by Amino Heal, the official brain protection supplement of Power Slap. Introducing to you first, in the blue corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 278 pounds, out of Rochester, New York, Dwayne the Iron Giant Crespo. And in the red corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, Weighing in at 377 pounds. Out of Las Vegas, Nevada, he is a number one ranked super heavyweight contender in the world. Dean, the Hawaiian hitman, Viernes. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Dwayne Crespo. Fun fact for you, only 15.2% of our matches in Power Slap have ended by knockout on the first slap. We'll see if that indeed does come to fruition tonight in our first match of the evening. 
This first slap of the night brought to you by Brickhouse Nutrition. Build better nutrition one brick at a time at BrickhouseNutrition.com. And here we go, Bisping. Yeah. So as Charlie said, a 100-pound weight difference, which is gigantic for the Hawaiian hitman. But for Crespo, he's probably like, well, I'm more muscle. You're carrying a lot of flab. And if it's flab, that's useless. Yeah, there's some weight there which can transform into power, but I wouldn't be surprised if Crespo can win this one because, you know, 270, uh, 265, 365. They're both big boys. They both got power. Let's see how Crespo does. Four of Crespo's five wins have come by knockout. Let's see if he can do it here. One. particularly hurt him. He actually looked like he enjoyed it. He's like, oh yeah, come on. Give it to me again. He didn't even move. I mean, his neck, can you imagine the neck size? I know you're a big custom suit guy, right? You're probably like a 16 and a half, 17 inch neck. That's oh. probably a 22 inch neck. I don't know when the last time I measured my neck was, but it's about 18 inches. Oh yeah? Yeah, right but, but it ain't nowhere near the size of the Hawaiian hitman. As I said, I, I, I'm kind of correcting myself. I said, oh, an extra 100 pounds, it doesn't matter. I think it matters? I, I, I take that back. <laughs> already, already yeah, you're yeah. walking it back. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The man doesn't move. All right, remember for the Hawaiian hitman, one win by knockout. That was his first ever match against Slap for Cash. He lost by disqualification in his last one. Very focused on not fouling is the Hawaiian hitman. Look at the size of the hands. Oh, juicy. Nah, nah. I didn't like it. I don't think it was juicy. Crespo took it like it was nothing. He's complaining it was a little high. Uh, you know, Cres, this is kind of his MO. This is what he does. It may have been just a, a shade high. Yeah, he does do that a lot. But it's it kind of like a little high, though, to be fair. Yeah, it's kind of like in the NBA when everybody, Luka Doncic and these guys just complain yeah. about getting fouled every time. That's Crespo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd actually give that to uh, Crespo, round one. Okay. I don't know, actually. It's, it's really one. close. It is. Look at the Hawaiian hitman having a little fun. Look at the speed of that windup. Uh, he kind of leaned into it. He did. Is that illegal? It's the opposite of a flinch. It is. Yeah. It's like a reverse flinch. Yeah. But that's a technique a lot of guys used. It's almost like the opposite of trying to roll with the punch. Oof. Look at the ripple. But it's not minimizing the power of the shot that you're about to receive. It's actually making it stronger. But he's so massive oh. that Crespo can't even get through the slab. No, no. He's got quite a lot of neck fat. It's the first time I've seen neck fat ripple. At what point does it become demoralizing as well for Crespo? Because you move up to his new weight class. He's never fought at super heavyweight before. I think and it about, already is. Yeah, about now he's like, oh, crap. I made a big mistake. I can't even put a dent in this guy. The Hawaiian hitman promised us a knockout. Let's see if it happens here. Oh. Not a lot. Not a lot on that one. He's complaining again. You're absolutely right, Dan Haley. Every time he's got a little complaint. That looks okay to me. Of course, with the beard, it can, you know, get people to struggle. He kind sometimes. of brushed his shoulder a little bit before he went. I think it's a Ooh. clean blow. So how do you score that one, right? You don't even move to Hawaiian Hitman, but he did absolutely zero damage to Crespo. 
I give it to the Hitman, for sure. It just looked like a better slap. Okay. More impact. The Hawaiian Hitman, like, if he was asleep, I thought that would have even woke him up. That's the heavyweight champ, Damian DeBell, who's coaching the blue corner, coaching Crespo up. They used to be opponents. Now they talk a lot more because Crespo says, hey, I don't have to face him anymore, so we're comparing tips. Let's see what kind of a tip he gave him here. This is a huge round three for Crespo. Will it be just the tip that he needed? I see what you did there. Fair blow. Crespo likes that one. Didn't do a lot of damage, though. Again, he's not able to move Viernes off the spot. And that's the problem, because even though it might be a really powerful blow, when your opponent hardly moves, doesn't make any kind of reaction, a bit of swelling on that left eye, to be fair. But when, yeah, when the opponent doesn't move, that's going to influence the judges a little bit. And now, that, again, is where the size comes in. That is clearly the best strike of the match thus far by Crespo. So credit him for that. He got through that one, didn't get stuck right as soon as he met that uh, boulder of a head that's atop the Hawaiian hitman's shoulders. Well, this crowd is filling up. They want somebody to go to sleep. Yes, they do. So no pressure, Hawaiian hitman, but this crowd is thirsty. He can eat a slap. Can he deliver the knockout blow here in round three? Yeah, it wasn't the best shot. This is actually a pretty close match. It's a very close match. I'm a little surprised at that final blow from the Hawaiian hitman. I just didn't seem to have a lot of force behind it. The sound wasn't particularly impressive. It wasn't a good shot. Look at the feet. He kept those feet down. He didn't foul for the first time in a long time. Coming into this fight, he had four slaps and two fouls, so 50% of the time was a foul for the Hawaiian hitman. Here's your scorecard, Bisping. Yeah, I mean, I hope I don't have to justify it to the Hawaiian hitman's face later, but judging by slaps to the face, I thought Crespo landed the better shots in one and three. Round three, I was a little underwhelmed by the Hitman's, you know, not the power, not the attempt. I mean, he tried everything he had, but he just there wasn't much on it. Crespo didn't get a reaction, but I feel like there was some good impact there. So that's what I'm basing that on. All right, so you have Crespo. If Crespo does indeed get the win, it would be quite uh, an achievement in his first ever super heavyweight bout. The official decision is presented by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Head to kudosnacks.com now and enter the promo code SLAP for 25% off your order. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score the contest 29-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Dwayne the Iron Giant Crespo. I'm here with the winner, Dwayne Crespo. Dwayne, super heavyweight division. You came, you saw, you conquered. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling good. I thought it'd be a little harder. I thought supers could hit hard. Uh, my division, number one heavyweight, number one super. Well, it's crazy to think you were 100 pounds lighter than Dwayne and Hitman. I mean, did you even think that you stood a chance? Obviously you did or you wouldn't be here, correct? Uh, I'm gonna win. Again, no one's taking the extra money from my family. It ain't happening. 400 pounds, 600 pounds, I do not care. And I know when you entered this division, your goal was to go to the very top. Obviously, he's the number one contender. You wanted to skyrocket to the top of this division. Now that you've beat him, do you feel like you've done enough to earn that title opportunity? Uh, I think eight fights, no fouls, number one in heavyweight, no more in super, no title shots. I think it's time. So what do you want to be next for you? Super heavyweight title fight? Heavyweight title fight. I'm in super, let's get the super title. Okay, well, Dwayne Crespo, congratulations.
The Iron Giant approving to 6-2. and two. That post-fight interview brought to you by 10X Health. Precision, nutrition, wellness. Go to 10xnutrition.com. So one fight, one win in super heavyweight for Dwayne Crespo. Getting it done, maybe not in emphatic fashion, but uh, impressive nonetheless, Michael Bisping. Yeah, what impressed me was his ability to take the shots of a gigantic man like the Hawaiian hitman. Oh, good work by Crespo. The first match of Power Slap 8 is in the books. To watch live and free the rest of this card, all you have to do is download and open the Rumble app no, now or go to rumble.com. Rumble, the home of Power Slap, and the only place to watch the rest of the card. It's so easy, just like YouTube. If you're watching us anywhere else right now, tune into Rumble, download the app. Go to rumble.com. You're not going to want to miss what's going down at the Fountain Blue Las Vegas tonight. Power Slap 8 coming to you live from this gorgeous, gorgeous building less than two years in. And Power Slap is already getting more views than several major sports leagues. And tonight, we're setting a new attendance record here at the Fountain Blue. Going to be about 3,000 strong. Here's a look at the weight classes. Women's bantamweight from 126 to 135. Then we go welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, the heavyweights up to 265, and then super heavyweights over 265. We have seen as heavy as 400 pounds in super heavyweight. Our co-main event tonight gonna be for the welterweight title. It's Emmanuel Muniz and Anthony Blackburn. Yesterday, Charlie Arnold cut off with both of them. Thank you so much here with the two men that will be facing off in the co-main event this weekend, Emmanuel Muniz and Anthony Blackburn. Both of you coming in with a lot of momentum, coincidentally, both having knockouts over Christopher Thomas. And now, Manny, your welterweight title is going to be on the line. How ready are you to face off against Anthony? Um, you know, more ready than ever, more ready than I was even against Chris. Um, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity again to showcase my talents, but, uh, you know, defend the belt for the first time, for sure. And Anthony, I know you talked about this is kind of like a pinch me moment for you. You've been working to get to this very position to fight for a title. So what's on your mind right now? I mean, yeah, this is definitely the biggest moment of my life, biggest moment of my power slap career. So if, if I can perform to my best abilities, it's going to be awesome on Friday. Well, I think it is going to be awesome. And something else that you said that really struck me was you think that this is going to go down as the greatest power slap match in history. Why do you believe that? get two of the best chins in the sport at a lighter weight. So there's a little more competition. We're not throwing as heavy, so we're gonna be standing longer. And five rounds of that, that war, ooh, can't wait. Emmanuel, you agree this is just gonna be an all out war? Yeah, no, definitely, you know, Blackburn has a chin, I have a chin, we both have been tested by, by some of the better of the sport. Um, he brings good power, I bring good power. I could definitely see us going, you know, putting on one of the best shows ever, definitely. And Emmanuel, you looked really good the last time out, but you, you're you very, I guess, particular about how you want this fight to look. You said it was just all about the details as far as your training went this time around. Talk to me about that. Yeah, you know, I'd learned, um, you know, obviously I had a good performance against Chris. Um, you know, I took from that fight, learned a lot of things, um, very minor details and, you know, perfected those, worked on those um, and continued to get better every day. Continuing to get better. And now we see exactly what is going to transpire pretty quickly here. Anthony, how do you see this fight going down? Uh, I think it's going to be a war. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that we go five rounds. Okay. If it is a knockout, I'll be very surprised. Okay, so, so you're not going to put yourself in the driver's seat in this one, or do you want to make any bold, bold statements right now? I mean, the technique is there, but I know he's got the chin. We'll just see if this 100% arm is, is coming a little faster than it was with KO Chris. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, how do you think this is going to play out? You know, in, in my head, you know, leading up to it, um, you know, I, I, of course, I envision a knockout. Um, you know, I have it how I want it, but, um, you know, obviously I can very much see it going uh, to decision. Um, being a crazy, crazy match, I could see us wobbling each other. Um, so, you know, I, of course, I think I'm going to pull it out. Um, believe in myself. I've always believed in myself, and that'll never change. So, Well, I respect both of you are humble, and I know we can expect fireworks come the fight this weekend. Guys, back to you.
Two title fights coming up. Now it's time for the ladies to step up. Our first two female matches on deck, and these two pack some serious power. Jackie Cataline announced herself as a force to be reckoned with in her first power slap appearance, and now it's time to build on that debut by delivering an epic performance against Katharina Lehner. Accomplished combat sports athlete Jackie Cataline may not have gotten the win in her power slap debut back in February, but the hybrid left a lasting impression with her performance against Sheena Bathory. Tonight, the California powerhouse returns for her sophomore appearance against newcomer Katharina Lehner, a 13-fight MMA veteran who competed on season 28 of The Ultimate Fighter. Germany's Lehner has also boxed professionally en route to the next chapter of her career on the Power Slap stage, where she expects to set a high bar for her fellow featherweights tonight. Coming up next, Jack, the hybrid Catalan, battles Katharina, German Gypsy Lena. It's the debut for Katharina Lehner. She competed on season 28 of The Ultimate Fighter. That was the Whitaker and Gastelum season. Has an eight and five pro MMA record. Used to train at Jackson, Jackson Wink and now in Denver with Elevation Fight Team. So a lot of MMA experience for her, Charlie. Yeah, you know, experience is important, but also, guys, you can imagine it always helps to have an ally in the locker room. And Katharina Lehner has won in the first lady of Power Slap. I, I have dubbed her that, Sheena Bathory. Uh, the two have been best friends for years. They met in Lehner's home country of Germany while both training in BJJ. Now, obviously, after having that MMA experience, being in season 28 of The Ultimate Fighter, she is super stoked to make her debut. She says Sheena has been texting her nonstop specifically saying to kick her pony Jackie Cataline's ass because remember guys that is the same woman who knocked out Sheena with the clubbing foul back in February so there is vengeance yes on Katharina's mind revenge will be served tonight in the mind of Katharina Lina her best friend Sheena Bathory as you say got knocked out cold but it was a disqualification her opponent Jackie Cataline clubbed her fouled her but still knocked her out. She's here tonight with one thing on her mind, that is vengeance. She's very accomplished. She's trained with a lot of great fighters, and she's here to do the business. Jackie Cataline is just a badass. I don't know how else to describe it. She's a mom of four. She's been an electrician. She's been a pro MMA fighter, high school wrestling coach, a uh, firefighter, a deputy sheriff. She's done just about everything except win in power slap. Yes, her first match produced that viral knockout of Sheena Bathory, but she lost by DQ, and she is hungry for a victory here tonight. Yeah, no, she really is. She's very accomplished in all kinds of combat sports. Wrestling, of course, is one of the things that she's excelled in, and that's why she has that power. Sheena Bathory is not an easy woman to knock out. She's playing up to the crowd here. Her kids at home that are watching, of course, they're very happy because they saw her mother go viral. And the reason it went viral is because it was a shocking knockout. It is a shame that it was a foul because the blow that she delivered had a tremendous amount of power. But as we spoke, as we've spoke about many times already tonight, You've got to be careful. You've got to be in control of your weapons. And unfortunately for her, that night she wasn't. Time now to take a look at the tail of the tape. Jackie Cataline, Katharina Lehner making her debut. It is Cataline, who is two years older, one inch shorter, and slightly bigger hand size. Cataline has the experience in coming in as a two one favorite in this one, and she wins the coin toss, so Cataline will be going first as well as we send it to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap women's featherweight division and presented by Cram, the official PB&J partner of power slap. Introducing to you first in the blue corner, she stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 145 and one half pounds. Out of Denver, Colorado, Katarina, the German gypsy leader. 
And in the red corner, she stands five feet, six inches tall, weighing in at 144 and one half pounds. Out of East Vale, California, Jackie the Hybrid. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Jackie Catalan. Taking a look at props to watch in case you're interested. How many fights of the eight tonight will go the distance? Plus 130 over two and a half, minus 160 under two and a half. We've already had one go to the judges' scorecards already, so two more. And you're cashing in on that if you bet the right way. So we've seen the power from Jackie Catiline before. Let's see if she can deliver a clean blow here as Katharina Lehner will have to eat it for well, the first she's, time. She certainly got the power we saw that last time. Oh, Lehner sure okay. felt that a little wobbled. That's a lean on the stand to just kind of balance herself. She's taking a minute. She did not like that. Felt like Cadline was making sure that she delivered a clean blow here. Feet are good, slight heel lift, that's just fine. Yeah, Jackie Cadline there certainly refined some things as we saw. A lot more control, landed it well, good shot, feet were nice. And as I was saying last time when she made her debut, all those years of wrestling, she's gonna be so strong. Seems like Lena's. Right, she's going dazed. on one. She's going on one. She might regret that. We've seen a lot of people go on one so far tonight. Look at Catalan just like grinning at her. Oh. Oh. oh, let's go. Talk a little smack already. I mean, that's what they're there to do, right? Slap each other in the face. Yeah. You can't get offended. Oh, it was a club. Yeah, that was low. Um, that was low. Okay, fair enough. I've seen worse, but certainly that's a, that's well, a foul. Her club last time was one of the worst you'll ever see. Yeah, and it was it was nasty. Sheena Bathory didn't wake up for a couple days after that one. She bad. is uh, ready to come back and anxious to get back on the stage of Sheena Bathory. Let's see if uh, let's see if Catiline lets loose a little bit here because I felt like this first one. Yeah. She was really focused on just a clean strike. She was kind of reserved. Last time she had a lot more energy about her, a little more wild. So two minutes go on to the clock when there's a foul. So plenty of time to recover for Jackie Cataline. Robert Trujillo, I'm sure, is telling her to take her time. Yeah. I mean, it's like in the UFC, you get up to five minutes if there's a certain kind of foul, but you very rarely take the five minutes. Seems here Catalan is gonna take the whole time just because, hey, I might, I might as well. And to be fair, that's smart. Recover. But I just wanna see some action. I think we might right here. Let's see if Jackie unleashes the power. Right, you can three. see Lena right up against that table. That's a veteran move right there. Look at the slide bend in the elbow as well. That helps generate power. Ooh. Lena just smiled. Maybe not as good more. as the first one. No, nope, nowhere near as good. All right, so round one's in the books. Because of the foul, Cataline takes that. Mark Smith messaged or signaled that that was a club. He wants to oh, look at it, and it is. It. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Hit it on the head, Bisbee. Right. That's what I do. It's like you've been doing this for a while. I mean, I've never power slapped in my life, but I've called a few eight to be precise. So here's what you have to remember because this new rule change a couple of months ago, one more foul by either fighter and they're DQ'd. In a yep. three round fight, two fouls get you disqualified. They're really trying to take the fouls out of the game, but it's easier said than done. But if Lena just lands a fair blow, just lands it, doesn't foul in any way. She'll win this round. So then it should be all even going into round right. three. Important to land clean more than anything else right here. But again, for the German gypsy, this is her debut. 
right on two. was awful there wasn't a lot of power the, the swing the technique all in just a bad effort yeah that 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 placement was off by about a foot yeah she took extra time on the measure and still wasn't able to hit the spot look at that my just, god that was a forearm that was a forearm strike that was a clothesline that <laughs> was a close line that, that's the wwe what are you doing yeah that's not ideal so, Kathleen Leaner, out of Denver, Colorado, in her debut, going to get the DQ loss. Jackie Cadline will record her first victory by disqualification. Yeah, not really the drama that we saw last time. I mean, when she knocked out Sheena Bathory, there was a tremendous amount of power. I thought we had a real superstar on our hands. Didn't get the finish tonight, but she did get the victory, and of course, a cleaner performance, although there was still a foul. Hey, 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 hey. All right, so we've seen uh, three too many fouls so far on this night in this fight. But the good news for the hybrid Jackie Cataline from Eastvale, California, she does get her first victory on the power slap stage as. Just stop fouling, please. Let's send it to our. Power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Smith calls a stop to the match in round number two, declaring the winner by disqualification, Jackie, the hybrid Cadillac. Celebs in the house, Shinsuke Makamura, Rey Mysterio here as well, WWE superstars. Michael Chandler supposed to be fighting this weekend. Instead, he's here with us. Going to be fighting Conor McGregor pretty soon. And Cam Newton in the house as well. Former three-time Pro Bowl quarterback here to check out some power slap. Back in the Fountain Blue, Las Vegas, our first visit to this beautiful establishment. We're setting attendance records, 3,000 on hand here. Just getting started here tonight, two down and six to go. This top 10 middleweight rankings are presented by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Head to kudosnacks.com now. Enter the promo code SLAP for 25% off your order. John Davis is the champion. Azael Rodriguez, the number one contender, but keep your eyes on number two and number six. That's Wesley Train and Isaiah Quinones. Two against six, Michael. This should be a fun one here that we have coming up on deck. Yeah, Wesley Train has been around for a long time. He's one of the more familiar names, been very, very active. And coming into this one, very confident. So it's a top six middleweight showdown on the way. A win potentially puts Wesley Drain or Quinones in line for a title shot this year. An underrated veteran stepping up to the power slap stage for the 10th time. Wesley Drain is on a mission to reign over the middleweight division, but Isaiah Quinones has every intention of putting his halt to Drain's plans. With a host of middleweight contenders jockeying for a shot at the champion John Davis, Wesley Drain and Isaiah Quinones know what's at stake in tonight's showdown. So expect them to slap accordingly when it's their turn to throw. Oklahoma's Drain came close to the belt in his first fight with Davis, and after three straight wins, he's ready for an encore with the machine. But first, Quinones gets his crack at taking Drain down. And after an emphatic knockout of Ryan Wallace in his April return after a year-long layoff, he's in prime form before this pivotal battle. Coming up next, Wesley, all the smoke drain, takes on Isaiah, Puerto Rican pretty boy, Quinones. The Puerto Rican pretty boy, Isaiah Quinones, 33 years old from Palmdale, California. Started a new job a few months ago as an engineer for Supernol. What is Supernol, you ask? Ah, it's just a vertical takeoff airplane company. Smart dude who's coming off his first win, a third round KO of Ryan Wallace. 
back in April. Yeah, and he's saying that that has really changed his approach. He's so happy to finally get a stoppage in Power Slap. Of course, in other organizations like out in Russia on the same promotions as the upcoming Dumpling, who we'll see later, he's had many KOs, but not in Power Slap. And finally, he got one, and that was when he moved up in weight to 185 pounds. Because of that, he's staying there. His opponent, Wesley Drain, he said he loves it. He said he loves all these guys. There's a real brotherhood and camaraderie between them all. However, nothing changes. He's looking to knock him out cold. Tonight's betting odds presented by Circus Sports. Sports betting the way it should be. Wesley Drain, the minus 154 favorite. Quinones, the 134 dog. This is your favorite, Wesley. All the smoke drain, his 10th power slap match. The most active fighter on the roster. Calls himself to go to the promotion to impart to his activity and the fact that he's never been knocked down. Has a granite chin, and I'll tell you what, Bisping, he seemed a little more energized during fight week this time. Yeah, that's right. We're really seeing a transformation, not only of the sport, but of their, their, their competitors, because Wesley Dre, when we speak to him, He's very nonchalant, he's very much like he couldn't care less. But, you know, obviously he wants to be successful, but now he really feels that, that this is changing him as a person. He's getting better, he's more disciplined with his life, he's working out, he's working more in general, he's earning money, and it's gave him a real thirst for life. As you mentioned, he said that he's one of the GOATs. He, he has had some tremendous performances, some great knockouts, but he's had a few losses along the way. What he wants to do now, as he steps on the canvas with the shoes off, by the way, I never like it when they have the shoes off. Trying to get on a good winning streak here against Isaiah Quinones. Coming in, having won three in a row, and great point, Bisping. We've talked about that before. Going to be interesting to see if the no shoes leads to a little slippage as we take a look at the tail of the tape for Quinones and Wesley Drain. 32 and 33 years old. Drain is a couple of inches taller and has a five-inch reach advantage as well. Hand size definitely in Quinones' corner, who is the underdog coming into this one as we send it to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap middleweight division and presented by Double Eagle Injury Law. Slap back by visiting Double Eagle Injury Law today. Introducing first, in the blue corner, he stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Out of Palmdale, California, he is the number six ranked middleweight contender in the world. Isaiah, the Puerto Rican pretty boy, Quinones. And in the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 186 pounds. Out of Tahlequah, Oklahoma, he is the number two ranked middleweight contender in the world. Wesley, all the smoke train. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris Tione. Winner of the coin toss and striking verse, Isaiah Quinones. Sign up to the Crypto.com app with the code POWER and make a single purchase of $50 or more. So no shoes for Wesley Drain, and we talked about Quinones coming off his first win. What does that do for the confidence of a guy like Quinones to finally get that W? Well, you certainly feel like you're doing the right thing because you're getting the rewards and then the results that you're looking for. You know, if you imagine how it feels to come out here and lose and not get the knockouts and all the rest of it. Moved up a weight class, got the knockout, coming into this one, very confident. And now oh, oh, he stumbles him right out of the gate. First oh. shot, wobbled him bad. Wesley Drain putting on a show, shaking the shimmy. And now when he swings back, he's got no shoes on. There's right. no traction. He can't generate enough power and stick. And the pivot and the heel lift are exaggerated when you're not yeah. wearing shoes. You know, 
we didn't talk about the strength of Quinones. He benches 415 pounds. His first fight at middleweight was his last fight. That was his first win, not cutting as much weight. And he says this is his proper weight class. It looks like it's paying dividends. 100% because Wesley Drain has got a granite chin. We said that on the walk. He's never been knocked out. First shot almost put him to sleep. Now, Drain's taking this a lot more serious these days. He's rocked up with no shoes on. Let's see what he's got. Oh. He's going to be a club. Yeah, that's a club. Clubbing foul on the experienced Wesley Drain. Nobody has more matches than Wesley Drain. And to start out like this, kind of a surprise for a veteran guy like Wesley Drain. It's a big surprise. And it wouldn't surprise me now if they made that a 10-7 round because it was a foul, so you lose a point. Quinones clearly won the round, almost knocked him out as well, so that's why I'd give him a 10-8 if I'm honest. And then you take the point away as well. Quinone is way ahead on the scorecards. How do you how do you get your scorecard up there so quick? It's magical. It's called math. I do it in my brain. I just do it instantly. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you mean on the screen? Yeah. I don't know. Remember that championship <laughs> fight against John Davis? He had a, a third round clubbing there and and a stepping in the first round, which uh, cost him the title in a five round fight. That was way back in uh, May of 2023 against John the Machine Davis. So here comes Quinones. The Puerto Rican pretty boy stumbles drain out of the gate. going to try to finish him here in the second round after a 10-7 first round, at least by Bisping scorecard. I understand again why if there's a foul, they give them two minutes. However, I'd like to see that tweet. If, if they don't need the two minutes, don't let them take it. Slows down the pace. Kidiones with another strong slap. Ooh. And Drain, he took it well initially. Then it started to sink in the damage. He is absolutely feeling all of it. Looking a bit confused there. A little cross-eyed. I can say that. That's fine. I think you're okay. Yeah. You, yeah, when it comes, you can say whatever you want yeah. about the eyes. Yeah. yeah. A little vacant. All right, so 25 seconds of recovery time, now down to 20, as Wesley Drain getting a little extra chalk and getting coached up by Robert Trujillo. I don't feel like Drain went barefoot in the past. Do you remember that? It never works out for anybody. It never works out. It's a massive mistake. There's a reason why shoes, running shoes, track shoes were invented, because you get traction. Oh, bit of blood on the face. Must have been a good amount of power, but flinching. Flinching foul. Oh, here we go. You know what that means. All right, so the flinching foul has been called on the Puerto Rican pretty boy. Let's, let's look I at this. I didn't see a flinch. That's not a flinch. I'm not seeing it. I, I don't know if the super slow motion doesn't allow us to see it. That is not but a it, flinch. It does not look like a flinch to me. Yeah, and the crowd knows. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's going to hit him again. I'm not sure why we have replay if we're not using replay. Yes, correct. There's been a couple of bad calls tonight. So in comes Damian DeBell, the blue corner coach to, and the cut man now up to clean up Pretty Boy's face. Can't have a nickname like Pretty Boy with uh, blood all over your face, you know what I mean? See, again, it's like I'm criticizing, but um, he flinched, so he gets to go again, right? But all of this here is slowing it down, the accumulation factor for Wesley Drain. So he braces his body. Look at this. This is what they're calling a flinch, the way like he brings the shoulders up. But the head is not moving I, at I, all. I, I don't think the shoulders come up. I think a lot of guys do that. Maybe you have to do it a little earlier. I, 
They've never called that a flinch before, though. So here goes Drain getting the second shot here in the second round. Let's see if he can do some damage on two. That's massive for Drain, though, because he's coming back into well, this. To be honest, he did the exact same thing. So I'm glad they didn't call it, but yeah. he did the same thing. Yeah, he did the exact same thing. So they did not take a point for flinching. They just allowed Drain to deliver a second blow here in the second round. The ladies a little distraught by what they're seeing here tonight, but enjoying it nonetheless. Nonetheless, that was Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brent, UFC's Octagon girl. She's seen a bit of blood before. Indeed. Come on. Indeed. It's always a little different when you attend Power Slap and. We are uh, filling up to the rafters here, Michael Bisbee. We are. We need a knockout. So Drain clearly landing with a lot of power because you see the blood coming out of the face of Quinones. But let's remember, Isaiah Quinones has wobbled him every time. Career. And the crowd goes crazy. He's almost up. Eight. Nah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Quinones with the huge upset over Wesley Drain. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. I tell you what, the crowd loved that one. They're all on their feet now. Fair play to Drain. He took a massive shot, was wobbled every time. This one put him down, put him down hard. You see here, almost headbutts the table, kind of comes around, saves himself any embarrassment in terms of headbutts, but then falls on the ground, fights hard, slowly but surely got to his knees. Look at the blood, just the slobber. Forrest catches him momentarily. That's a great angle. Catches himself just there before he headbutts the table. Forrest steps in, saves the day, puts him down. Referee ushers him away, so he's got to be by himself, use his own will to stand up. And he's trying, God bless him, but it was not meant to be. Isaiah Pretty Boy Quinones gets the job done. How about Isaiah Quinones starting his career with two straight losses, now two straight wins, and this one over the self-proclaimed OG of the sport, Wesley Drain. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Tyone calls a stop to the match in round number three, declaring the winner by TKO Isaiah, the Puerto Rican pretty boy, Quinones. So it's two in a row now for Isaiah Quinones, the Puerto Rican pretty boy stepping up and stepping up big here at Power Slap 8. It is time for the main card, which starts right now.